What's going on, gardeners? It's Thursday, June 1st, and the gardens are beginning to enter their peak season here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to share the video that many of you wait all season for. That is the late spring garden tour of my yard and garden. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. And we're going to begin this year's late spring garden tour with my straw bell garden. This is my first attempt at ever growing a straw bell garden, but I'm really happy with how things have turned out so far this year. And we're going to begin on the corner. This is my zucchini plant. Have you ever seen a zucchini plant that is growing vertically up a string like this? I'm really happy with it so far. I've harvested probably three or four zucchini off this plant, and it has not had any uh, squash bug pressure on it at all, unlike the ones in my earth bed garden. And I guess maybe growing in a soilless medium for whatever reason doesn't attract them. Whatever the reason is, I'm really happy with that. Then I want to show you my indeterminate tomato plants. And so far, I'm really happy with how well they look. They're growing like weeds in these straw bales. And for the first time ever, in early June, I don't have any signs of disease on my indeterminate tomato plants. Now, some of that may be due to the fact that we're having an unusually cool uh, start to the season here but a lot of it may also have to do with the fact that I'm growing these tomatoes in straw bales, so I don't have the soil splashing that I get with my uh, raised beds. So I think not having any soil to splash all over the tomatoes is certainly proving really helpful. And as you can see, I'm getting really good production on all of these cherry tomato varieties over here. We have huge clusters of fruit everywhere we look. Uh, pretty much 100% fruit set on all of the cherry tomato varieties. And that is to be expected in the start of the cooler spring where you get really good pollination. I've really gone a long way to add a lot more cherry varieties to my garden because of how well they perform here versus beefsteak tomatoes. You can see there are just cherry tomatoes as far as the eye can see on all of these plants and everything looking super healthy. Now here we have a straggler tomato plant. This tomato plant actually got knocked loose in a windstorm early in the year and completely blew over, but I was able to get it to root again. So this one is way behind because it lost an entire month of growth growing, but I was able to save it. That's why you see all of this, uh, all of these superfluous roots that are forming down here. I had to actually uh, use some duct tape to mend it back together and it is taking off again, but it's a little behind. It'll catch back up eventually. Uh, more cherry varieties, really great yields. Got some big fruit back there. I know it's a little bit hard to see from the, uh, this angle, but one of the downsides to the straw bale garden is I don't have a lot of room to walk through the aisles. Now this variety right here called Carmelo, really excited about this. This is actually a larger slicing tomato and just look at the yields on this baby. There are just tomatoes as far as the eye can see. I think this is going to be one of the best varieties of tomatoes uh, in terms of a larger slicing tomato uh, for production. Just off the charts, I think every single flower has pollinated, so I couldn't be happier about that. Now, what is really impressive to me right here is that even my yellow brandywine tomato, which is one of the most difficult tomatoes for me to grow, I'm getting good pollination for the first time ever thanks to the cooler weather, I guess. And I've never had this many yellow brandywine tomatoes on a single plant. So really excited about that. It still has dropped some flowers, but that's to be expected. But that's not the case on this Brandy Boy variety right here. This thing is just loaded up. This is a hybridized version of the brandywine pink. There are fruits as far as the eye can see on this. And just as many, if not more, on the big brandy that is right next to it. Boy, am I really impressed with Big Brandy this year. Beautiful, healthy plants. I may have my first sign of a little bit of blight on the bottom, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of pruning of those leaves. So everything is doing really well on the tomato front in my straw bale garden. I'm doing just as well on this eggplant right here. That's starting to load up with fruit. But the real uh, standout this year so far has been uh, the cucumbers. You can see I've been harvesting them on the bottom of the plant and uh, the top of the plant is starting to set more and more. I'm starting to get some of the larger Asian types of cucumbers really start to set on aggressively. 
my bait alphas are starting to set on. Uh, they take a little while sometimes because they love uh, growing some male flowers up front, but the party time has been the most impressive of all of my cucumbers so far. And this baby is just setting fruit all the way up the vines. So I am really happy with how this straw bell garden turned out for my first attempt. And if it keeps going this way, I'll definitely be doing this again next year. Now we'll enter my raised bed garden. And my raised bed garden is going through a transition right now. Most of the spring and late winter garden beds are ending their lives while the summer garden beds are starting to come alive. Here you can kind of see the remnants of my broccoli and cabbage. I still have some nice red cabbage that's forming. I'm somehow still harvesting broccoli here in June in North Carolina. Usually that is impossible here because it should be way too hot by now, but overall it is, it is doing really well. Uh, my kale that I planted uh, in the winter, that's my second crop of kale, uh, still doing really well, harvesting that several times a week. These are some dragon tongue string beans that are in the process of greening up. And I even still have some leaf lettuce intermixed with my leeks uh, that are doing well and a succession planting of carrots. So I'm really happy that my winter crops are still thriving at this time of year. Now the beds that are housing my summer crops are doing really well. These are successive plantings of cucumbers and tomatoes and eggplant. I like to have plants in all different ages. So when the older plants start to get tired, the newer plants will really start to kick in. Uh, succession planting will greatly help your uh, production overall. Don't try to keep your tired old plants alive throughout the season. This is a mini watermelon called Lemon Drop. I'm trying to trellis this up strings to see if they'll be able to hold the weight of the melons. This is again one of those party time cucumbers that is really blowing my mind. This is easily one of the most productive varieties of cucumbers that I've ever grown. I have additional indeterminate tomatoes that are over here uh, because I always like to have tomatoes in varying stages of age as well. Then over here I have my determinate tomato bed intermixed with a lot of leeks. So these are going to be hard to find. I had two cases of uh, some kind of wilt virus with two tomatoes that I had to rip out after we got almost 11 inches of rain in one day and they just succumbed to that terrible rainstorm. So that's why a lot of these are showing a little bit of disease pressure. It just got, they just got too much rain. But a lot of the ones over here for whatever reason are doing a whole lot better. Uh, I'm getting some really good production on these determinate varieties and uh, a lot of Roma types are starting to set on really hard in this bed. Uh, it's kind of turned into a jungle here. I haven't had time to stake them up. So excuse the presentation of the determinate varieties, but there is a ton of fruit in here overall. And uh, it's going to be a good, dis uh, it's going to be a good season for these determinate types. Um, even if you don't spray them or get to prune them, usually they put out fruit long before the disease actually kills them off. So I'm a lot less concerned as long as they don't get things like wilt virus, they will be in good shape. I have another later planting of mustard greens and cabbage in here. Uh, the cabbage is looking pretty good overall, but the mustard greens are starting to take on some kind of powdery mildew. So they are reaching the end of their life. They'll have to come out pretty soon. Then over here I have some corn, two different varieties. They're really nice and green. I've been staying on the fertilizing uh, because um, these super sweet varieties of corn just need a lot of nitrogen to keep them nice and green. And I have more successive plantings of various indeterminate tomatoes and more cucumbers. Again, like I said, I like to keep them uh, spread out throughout the garden in all different ages. That way when some start to die back on you, there are younger ones to take over. Then over here we have my old peas. I harvested the overwhelming majority of these about a month ago. Uh, some of the pods I'm letting turn yellow because I can save the seed once they're mature. Uh, this was a variety called Cascadia, a dwarf pea. Uh, it was one of the best snap peas I've ever grown. So I'm going to show you how to save the roots for more nitrogen into your soil later this year. Then over here, I have even more uh, indeterminate tomatoes. These were my first round of indeterminate tomatoes that I could not fit in my straw bales. And uh, they were just extras that I have. So they're really far along. 
I mean, this is the big beef, probably the greatest beefsteak hybrid uh, of all time in terms of indeterminants in their production. Just fruits like crazy. Uh, and I have more uh, cherry types in here. Like I said, I'm growing more and more cherry types as I figure out this climate that I live in. Uh, they just perform so much better here than um, any of the beefsteak types. Then over here, I have my, uh, my zucchini squash. Uh, this one has had a lot of pressure from squash bugs, probably because it's in soil, but the production has also been excellent. I've harvested three or four squash off of here so far. As you can see, more is forming. I just have to make sure to check under the leaves um, every couple of days to make sure there are no eggs. And I check around the plant for squash bugs uh, semi-daily. So far, it's doing really well. And just like before, I'm growing it up a string. Uh, it's a really great way to keep uh, pests off your plant. And uh, here I have a blue Hubbard squash. It's already got attacked by vine borers, so I had to cut it back, but it came back strong. I was able to remove them and it's doing really well. You just really have to keep on, uh, on top of them because they really attract vine borers. This is the remnants of my lettuce bed. I overplanted lettuce in the winter and it bolted too quickly. I think next year I'm gonna to have to find more heat tolerant varieties of lettuce. I ran out of some of my favorite seeds this year. So my second bed of lettuce just didn't turn out for me, unfortunately. Uh, the dwarf tomatoes are overall doing excellent. Uh, most of them look healthy and green. I'm starting to see some uh, first signs of disease on these plants. In my experience, these are the most disease prone of the tomatoes. I'm getting good production, um, but these are plants for a short season. These are not going to be able to produce uh, to the level of an indeterminate or a determinant. And I had a couple that I had to cut back because for whatever reason, when we got that 11 inches of rain, um, they just took on all kinds of disease that the other tomatoes did not get. So. If you're growing dwarf tomato variety tomatoes, just know they're more disease susceptible than most. I went a bit lighter on my pepper planting this year. I only planted one bed, but I put them in pretty high density. And I was really behind starting my seeds this year, but I'm starting to see the initial crops form, especially on the hot peppers, because the hot peppers I planted before the sweet peppers. Um, overall, um, everything's looking pretty good in here. I still have like four dozen pepper plants in this bed right here. Peppers actually do really well when planted in high density. Now we'll go over to my container garden area and I'll show you all my figs. The container figs so far uh, are having a really good year. I had minimal dieback this year on all of my container figs and that is probably because um, I put shade cloth over all of them in the corner of my house. So the corner of the house kept them a little warmer and the shade cloth kept them dormant longer. So this is some of the best that my container figs have ever looked and they are way ahead of my in-ground figs and some of them, particularly the early ones, are already starting to put on a lot of figs. Like this pastillier fig right here, um, that is starting to load up with fruit. This is always a really early fig, so is uh, Varieties like Ron de Bordeaux here, they're already starting to set fairly large figs at all the nodes. So uh, really coming along, and as long as we don't have too wet of a summer, hopefully it should be a pretty productive fig season. I've done a lot of work to try and consolidate my fig collection because I'm just overwhelmed by them. So this new trellis setup that I have, it kind of keeps them all isolated together. And uh, the spacing's been really good so far. Uh, the drip irrigation has made it really easy to water them with basically no, no work on my part at all. And I'm really happy with how things are turning out. I also added three new quote unquote high-end figs this year. I have the Borgeso Negro Ramada, which you see right here. That is a variegated fig. I have the Parajal Ramada, which is also a variegated fig, and I have a bass's favorite. I had a tree growing a year ago, but it, had, it got root rot for whatever reason and died on me, so I replaced it with a new tree this year. 
Uh, my key lime and my variegated lemon that you see right here, they took a little bit of a beating in the winter. They always do. They hate the fluctuating temperatures. They are very cold sensitive, but they always come right back in the spring. And they're a bit of an ever bearing tree. So they flower and they fruit continuously throughout the year once things warm up. My blood orange is a little bit behind this year. It went two years where it just set an absurd amount of fruit and it looks like this year it might be going through an alternate bearing season. Uh, that's probably my fault for letting it over fruit. There's only a couple of fruits on this tree. Let that be a lesson to you for these larger trees. Don't let them fruit too much or you may occasionally go through a season with no fruit at all. Uh, down here I have my little hybrid red lime tree and this one always kills it every year no matter what. Uh, my coffee always takes a little bit of a beating over the winter but the plants always come back strong uh, in the spring and summer. They're greening up. You can see they still have some of the old leaves on them that, uh, that get kind of beat up during the winter but um, they will be replaced soon. There is new foliage forming and they will just drop naturally. Then over here you have all of my fig trees that I grew from seed on my fig tree breeding project and they all look fantastic. They all flew through the winter with flying colors, no damage to any of them. Um, it's amazing how adaptable figs can be. Uh, so maybe growing them uh, in, in my climate, having them start uh, their life from seed with this type of weather helps them or something. I can't explain what it is, but every single one of them just did really well. And some of these are starting to form fruit. There are lots of figs forming on this tree right here, and I expect plenty more to form over the course of the season, and we should be able to evaluate some brand new figs this year. And then finally over here, we have my garden teepee area where I just like growing some plants in 20-gallon uh, grow bags for fun. I have a super sweet 100 tomato plant that I'm growing here up the garden teepee. This is only one plant right here. I haven't been pruning it. I want it to vine out as much as possible. And man, this thing is growing like crazy. No sign of disease. It's already setting tons of tomatoes, as you can see down there and also in there. Um, it's really loving being able to grow completely uncontrolled with no pruning. Uh, then I have the Kajari melon growing right here, which is one of my favorite small fruited melons. There are three plants in that 20 gallon grow bag. Then over here, I have um, potatoes that I planted earlier in the season. I showed you how to plant them. They're in the process of just beginning to die back. So hopefully we will be able to harvest them soon. Over here, I have, this is a small bush type butternut squash that I'm growing for the first time this year. I don't know how they'll manage with the vine borers here, but I can't wait to give them a try. And then over here we have the honey rock cantaloupe, which is one of my favorites. It's a little mini cantaloupe. It's great to trellis up something like a garden teepee. They're a lot smaller fruits and they mature very quickly. They're easier to grow in areas with a lot of disease pressure because it doesn't take a long time for the vines to produce. So overall, everything here looking pretty good. Then we'll transition over to my in-ground fruit trees and my bananas. I have two that I haven't even been able to unpack for the season yet. That's how far behind I've been. I've been traveling so much for work. So the ones I was unable to unpack, they're looking pretty good. Um, pretty much all the pseudo stems died back over the years, so I'm kind of starting fresh. But my in-ground fig trees, these are my first six that I ever planted. Uh, all of these, for the most part, are looking great. These trees, I think, are going on their fourth season, so they're pretty well established. Even the trees that died back completely to the ground last year look really good. I should be able to reestablish this tree, all of the cordons, for example. Um, and then... Uh, the two on the end here took a little bit of winter damage. This guy, I had to uh, cut some of the cordons off. And my Martinica Ramada over here really took a beating. I don't know why. I will be able to reestablish the tree and it'll be just fine. Then around the base of these trees, I also like growing watermelon. It worked out really well for me last year. So I planted the watermelons in the same area uh, this year as I did last year my giambo persimmon tree this thing is flourishing this is only its third season and it is just killing it and it is loading up with fruit 
I'd love to show them to you, but the foliage is so dense, they're hard to see. Uh, there's a lot of fruit down here that is forming. There's a lot of fruit over here that's forming. I have never had fruit on this tree before. So this is its very first season, and I'm hoping it's going to be a good one because it is doing really well so far. I'm really excited. There are several dozen fruits on this tree, so hopefully it'll have a really good showing for its third season. And this is yet another banana that I haven't been able to unpack yet. I'm eventually going to pull off that cage and then put all of the straw on my younger fig trees. Now these fig trees are not as established and they took a lot of winter damage last year and this year is no exception. They took another beating. This Coldedum Grease is growing back from damage last year. This fig tree right here, my, carf, uh, my Golden Dawn fig, uh, didn't take any damage, looking good. The White Madeira number one died back to the ground last year and it wasn't able to grow enough uh, to be protected for the winter this year, so it died back yet again but it has recovered and I'm going to stake this up shortly. My car fig, really stout, took no damage for whatever reason, but the heartbreaker is once again, for the second year in a row, my Del Sanduami Gran died back to the ground. And I don't know why, it also hasn't sprouted back. I keep cutting it back and the wood looks nice and green, and I don't know what's going on with that tree. I sure hope I didn't lose it because every time I scrape the bark, everything looks green, but it has no activity. And my Coldedon Jagantina died back to the ground. Well, not to the ground. It died back partially um, and it is coming back. So good news there. Uh, my grapevine, on the other hand, is a happy story. This thing is thriving and the cordons came out just perfectly. I am so happy with the way that looks. That right there is a picture perfect grape and it is loading up with a ton of fruit. I think I'm going to have to start bagging them up soon so pests don't eat any of them because they're going to start uh, becoming attractive and uh, they could also contract disease as the humidity builds. So we definitely want to try and protect these to keep the pests and the disease off of them because there is just a ton of fruit on this thing. I started to redo my blackberry patch last year because I wasn't happy with the way the beds were turning out. And uh, in the process, I have a lot of dollar weed that's sprouting back here for whatever reason. Now, this did look great until it got blown over in a really bad windstorm and I had to restake everything. Uh, I still am um, inundated with lots of fruit uh, that are on the ground there. It's a little bit hard to see. It has set on nicely. It's just the bush took some damage. Um, but we also have some younger fruit up there as well. So that will scatter fruit for us intermittently throughout the season. A lot of the other ones I just wasn't happy with. I pulled out some varieties I didn't like. I started to replace them. I'm still trying to figure out what blackberries and raspberries do well here. I pulled out my, uh, my red raspberry I did not like last year and I replaced it with a golden raspberry. This thing is brand new. We will see how it does, but like I said, this area of the garden just needs a little bit more attention. My citrus in the rear property had an absolutely fantastic first season last year. Uh, and over the winter, they sailed through without any problems. But once the early spring started, they kind of stalled on me. My Caracara red orange here uh, did really well. Uh, it's grown tremendously and it set a few fruits. But my Kumquat and my Brown Select Satsuma here, um, they're kind of going through a stall phase. And I'm wondering if they're just trying to put down more roots or maybe I let them overbear the first season but they haven't flowered for me yet this year, which is weird because they did last year just fine. So we'll see, I gave them a little bit of fertilizer, I'm letting them rest. Um, I expect this tree right here to do great, but we'll see what the other two do. Uh, luckily I have enough citrus planted throughout the yard and garden that if one or two of them take a year off, it won't really hurt me. Uh, the pawpaws are coming on their fir uh, fourth season these are the slowest growing trees that I have. They take forever. They flowered for me this year, but they flowered at opposite times. So they just don't have enough growth on them yet for them to flower at the same time. So this year I'm going to give them quite a bit of fertilizer and push them pretty hard. So I hopefully get more wood for flowers to form on the new season, but they are very healthy. My non-astringent persimmon right here, 
Uh, this fruited for me heavily last year, and this year it looks like it's taking a year off. It only produced a few flowers, and all of the fruits dropped except for one. So once again, because I probably let it overbear its very first year, it's going to take the second year off, but that's why I have two trees. Uh, my other tree should easily pick up the slack of this tree. Then over here, I have my three-in-one grafted Asian pear. Uh, I did this by myself. I purchased one tree, and I bought fruiting wood from two other varieties, and I established three different levels of fruit. So this bottom wire right here, that is the Hosui variety of uh, Asian pear. The second right here, the second wire, is the Korean giant, and I'm getting uh, both of the chip buds. Uh, they took off, so I'll be able to establish a cordon here and a cordon there for the second wire. And then up top is the actual variety of fruit tree, which is the Chojuro variety. So uh, we're not going to get any fruit on it just yet because it's only going on its second season. And last year was the first year that I grafted everything. So this is basically one year's worth of progress. Over here I have my peach tree, and I chopped this down to nothing. Um, because I want to grow this as a three-level espalier tree. And it was, uh, I got it as too large of a tree, so I couldn't fit it on the lowest cordon. Uh, it was even too tall for the second cable. So I cut the whole thing down, and I'm just going to start all over again because uh, I just want a very specific form on this tree. And since I cut it down, I probably put it into shock, so it hasn't budded back out. But it eventually will. It is still alive. My apple trees, on the other hand, they are looking fantastic. I was able to establish the cordons on these very well. Um, they're even starting to put on their first apples. So this is only their second season. Look how perfect that looks. That is a fine looking apple tree right there. And this variety is putting on an apple there, an apple there, and there are lots of other flowers on this plant that are going to turn into apples. They are all pollinated. They've been on there for a while. They will turn into apples. Same thing goes with this variety right here. This, uh, all of these were pollinated. Those flowers will eventually turn into apples. Oh look, that one right there actually has. So, I'm happy to say that I will have my first apples this year, but I will have to heavily thin these trees so I don't get too many and they don't stall on me. And then this is a brand new pink pearl apple that I just planted uh, this season. We haven't done anything at all with this yet. It's too young, it's only a couple of months old. But I will eventually have a nice little apple set up. Then we have my queen of the garden, the Owari Satsuma. This is my oldest fruit tree. This thing had the most incredible season last year, and this year is going to be no different. It's set on flowers like crazy, and it's really hard to see because the fruits on this tree are still green, but they are everywhere if you look closely. I think this is going to be yet another fantastic Satsuma season, and this tree has never let me down uh, for a single year. Just incredible. This Leela avocado continues to frustrate me. Uh, this will be its fourth full year in the ground. Every year it has fruited for me like crazy, but every year it gets the fruits to be about the size of a nickel and it drops them. And the same exact thing is happening this year. As you can see, the ground is being littered with avocados. I still have a few more that are hanging on, but I expect them to drop as well. And I don't know exactly what the problem is. Um, it pollinates fine. It sets the fruit fine. It could just be that it's just a really temperamental tree and it's going to take many years for the avocado tree to hold its fruit. Seed grown avocado trees can take 10 to 15 years to hold their fruit. Uh, this is a grafted tree, so maybe it's just gonna take five, six, seven years. I don't know what its problem is. Uh, this has been my most frustrating tree because it looks so good. But right next to it, we have the Meyer lemon, and it is having yet another incredible season. There are lemons on this tree, as far as the eye can see. It's full of fruit, and it still continues to flower. These trees, they just, they, they just don't stop. I still have a few lemons down there that you may be able to see from the previous year. And uh, they hold the fruit on there pretty well, but there's just, there's fruit everywhere. So I know it's gonna be a great Meyer lemon season, 
probably the best ever. And then the last of my vegetables are over here up against the house. These are my early tomatoes that I started back in the winter and they're pretty much done. They're in the process of dying back. Um, they're kind of being overwhelmed by disease or they're dying back naturally. And uh, I keep them over here isolated because uh, the disease is starting to get to them. I don't want them anywhere near my other plants. Um, as you can see, there's tomatoes all over the ground, so they will ripen on me. They're just earlier dwarf and determinate varieties. So uh, nothing major going on here, just finishing out the season. And then here I have my Okinawan sweet potatoes that I overwintered. I need to start and get those slips into the ground as soon as possible. I'm starting to run behind on them. And the last thing I want to show you is the eastern wall of my house. This is where I have my southern high bush blueberries growing and they had the best season that they've ever had. Um, this is their second full season in ground. I've been picking off of these for quite a while. I still have a good number of the berries on them, uh, which is why I still have them covered up with shade cloth. But boy, did these southern high bush varieties perform well this season. Uh, next to it, I have my pineapple guava, aka my fehoa tree. And this thing flowered like never before. I'm going to have an incredible fehoa season this year. And that's saying a lot because last year was incredible. This tree set fruit like crazy and it's double the size it was last year. I can't believe how big and good it, it looks. This is probably the easiest of any fruit tree I've ever grown. Then over here I have my rabbit eye blueberries. Again, they're entering their second season. These are later season varieties than the southern high bush and they are just starting to turn blue. Looks like I have a little bit of bird damage on that blueberry right there so I need to get uh, some more insect netting to protect them. Uh, so they are coming along and they are a great way to extend the harvest when you combine two types of blueberries together, both a high bush and a rabbit eye. And then over here I have the Takaka pineapple guava, aka fehoa, and uh, this is on its first full year in the ground. It's starting to put on growth. Um, and because I love my other fehoa so much, I wanted a second one. And this is a select variety, not a seedling like the other. So the fruit should be even larger and more delicious. And that right there is a full tour of my yard and garden and everything I have growing on right now. Now this year was a very difficult year for me because I took on so many projects at once. I rebuilt this entire container garden area and doubled the size of my trellis area. I also tried straw bale gardening for the very first time, which was a new endeavor for me. So I had to learn all about that. And I had four or five different work trips that all coincided in late winter and the spring. And it totally put a damper on everything and really held me back. However, despite the fact I have not been able to pay nearly enough attention to my plants, not nearly as much as I usually do because of all the different things I had going on, all of the things for the most part are doing really well. So I'm happy to say the overwhelming majority of my yard, specific, uh, specifically the fruit trees, are starting to enter a point where they can sustain themselves mostly on their own with a lot less attention. And that is the great thing about watching these food forests grow. It is definitely a lot to take on in the beginning as you plant everything and you basically remake your entire yard from an empty sandy mound of grass and ants and transform it into a beautiful Beautiful food forest but over time it really does get a lot easier and I'm happy to finally be entering that phase and I'm really glad that so many of you have joined me for the journey along the way so everybody I sure hope you found this tour of my yard and garden fun if you have any questions about the things that I'm growing please ask them down in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them for you if you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden I'll make sure to link them all down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description so expect Expand the video description and click on the Amazon link to see everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.
running away. Come on down. There you go, buddy. Eat the ice cream. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. Oh, look at him go. Go, Duke. Come on, Daisy. Eat the ice cream, Daisy. Come on, get the treat. Happy birthday, Daisy. Well, somebody really likes it.